There's deer everywhere on this property. Middle of the day. Mama and some yearlings. Hmm. This might change my shooting location. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with these bad boys and just kind of back off. This is my plan for today. I'm gonna do two types of shoots, power and precision. I've got these targets set up at roughly 75 yards. I'm gonna take five yards, starting with the 223-556 on the steel, five on the steel, one in the five bales of paper, which it should definitely capture that. I've got two bottles filled with water over here uh, with old laundry detergent, and I believe in a 223 you should capture those. And then I'm gonna repeat this with the 50 crater. Five shots with that. And I'm really curious if it's gonna still be standing after the first couple. One shot into the paper so I could capture it. And then last time I shot um, water bottles, or these uh, Tide bottles, I only had three and a blue right through them. So this time I've got six. I really hope to capture a bullet. I know I'll be able to capture it in the paper, but I really want to try to capture one in the uh, water to see what type of hydraulic expansion we get. Let's get this started. And this is what happens when you forget your camera gear. You've got to use a GoPro. Typically not going to be the best visual, but we'll see what we can do. I don't have a sling, but I'll do the best that I can. This is going to be tough through the paper. We've got a lot of grass to cut through. Uh, definitely got one of them. We'll go find out. I did not put the brass catcher on this one just to see how it's cycling. Hopefully the GoPro will pick that up. And this is not as balanced as my 223 on here. There's a lot more weight in the back. So uh, let's see if I can keep the same pace with this as I did my 223. Well, <laughs> that answers that. Let me do one in the paper here. Now the bottles of water. Please catch this. Let's oh man, I think we're going to Let's go see the damage. Can't believe it knocked that steel plate down at 75 yards. Literally tipped it over. Oh, let's check out the damage here. Oh, I think we caught the bullet. One, two, let's see, one, two, oh, I shaved it, three, nope. God, dog, it went through all six of them. One, two, three, four, five. Is it in here? Nope. <laughs> I definitely got it in the paper though. Look at that. Yeah, no exit, so I finally got a bullet there. But this is what tripped me out the most. It literally Ooh. knocked that over. Let me put this out to maybe 125 yards, see if it'll do the same thing. Paste it off another 65 yards, so what is that, 75 and 60, that's 125-ish. If it knocks over at this time, I'm gonna put it out farther. I just gotta hear this thing, ding, 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 ding. That looked good. I'm gonna actually aim low, to hopefully not tip this thing over. A hundred and oh, what happened there? One, two, three, did I shoot five? What the heck? I thought it tipped over at four. I gotta recount those, make sure it's not at the chamber here. You might be able to see the difference between a 300 grain bullet and a 69 grain bullet. There's a couple there, that's just one, two, 
Looks like I got two in a row. Look at that mark. That is wicked. That is so cool. For the precision shot, I'm gonna start with the master lock on the left and then the can of paint. And then I'm gonna to try to do that sniper 300 grade bullet down the scope trick. All right, now we're going for precision. That being the case, I'm gonna lower myself and squat and shoot because it keeps me more stable. Oh yeah, I don't think that scope's usable. I only nicked it too. It was right there, I nicked it on the bottom. Let's see where the lock went. Where the, oh here it is. Yeah, that master lock got mastered by a 300 grain bullet. Look at this, absolutely devastated it. There's nothing left. I can't even find the locking mechanism on top. All right, for my last set of crater shots, I've got a hay bale set at 205 yards. It's that one in the middle between those three and the far back with a freshly painted steel plate. I gotta see if I could pop this thing. I'm just basically gonna aim at the top part of that steel plate. Oh, I hit the chain. <gasps> to no surprise, the 69 grain Sierra bullet out of the 223 penetrated much deeper than the 300 grain Hornady FTX bullet out of the 50 crater. The narrow profile will allow it to dive in much deeper. But what was amazing about the 300 uh, FTX bullet is it literally left a two and a quarter inch crater inside of the paper, and this only left a three quarter inch uh, wound track. Here's the result of the 205 yard shot sequence. These were my first two shots. And if you measure this real carefully, you can see that it is just under an inch and a quarter which is not bad for a bullet that's definitely not designed to travel long range. And of course, the way it was shooting was not the most stable. The next shot came down here. This was my fourth shot. And this fifth shot here is the one that knocked it off the steel. And I love what the Hornady bullet does there. I'd say the crater's accurate. I've got to get this 50 crater back to its owner this week. And I got to tell you, I have had an absolute blast shooting this caliber. One of the first questions that came up before I received this, and I know a question that you guys are gonna ask, is what type of recoil does this rifle uh, put out? <laughs> to be honest, with a, with a gun that's shooting a 300 grain bullet at 2650, delivering 5,000 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. This has a very nominal and mitigated recoil, and I think it has to do with this muzzle brake right here. I don't know if this is being developed in-house or who is designing this or what brand this is, but I promise you that's probably the saving grace of this rifle. Now, everything on this AR-10 or MSR-10 
from what I believe is standard. I don't think there's anything specialized or modified in this. And he'll correct me. And by the way, I'll put the owner's information below if you're interested in getting into the 50 crater. I know the lower is standard. The uh, buffer tube, the buttstock, everything is standard in the back. Um, the bolt is standard. Of course, the head's gonna be different and the barrel. So I think this might be one of those drop in and go AR-10s if you're really interested in this. And he'll correct me if I'm wrong about that. Now, the only thing that it probably needs a little bit of work with is this magazine right here. As you could tell during my first hunt, I definitely had a couple of issues. If there is any way to get this as a single stack magazine, because right now it's double stacking, and um, what happens is after I get it past bullet number seven or eight, it really starts to get wonky. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got eight rounds loaded into this magazine and with this big 300 Remington Ultra Mag case, you can see from the front and the back that it's trying hard to single stack and it's almost about to pop right out of there instead of being in the corner where it belongs over here. Um, and I can actually feed that, it actually went well there. And I could try to get this into the chamber, but what happens is when I start feeding this, this bullet starts wiggling around and it refuses to feed into the chamber properly. So the easy fix would be only load five rounds into your magazine and I've had no problems with that or to figure out a way to get a single stack magazine for these big monster bullets. If you're into big bore calibers, I invite you to step into the 50 Crater. This thing has been an absolute joy to shoot with a very nominal recoil, and this thing has been dead on accurate. I will post the owner's information below about this caliber so you can reach out to him and get your own. And I gotta start getting ready for elk season, 40 something days away. I just gotta hear this thing. Ding, 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 ding.